Welcome to Virginia International Raceway. Calvin Fish here for the return of Pirelli GT4 America Sprint Action. And what a race we have in store for us this afternoon. Spencer Pompelli has put that Porsche Cayman GT4 for the racers group on the pole, but he's got a lot of tough uh, competition right behind him. Drew Stavely coming off a brilliant victory at Coda, looking strong once again in the Ford Mustang GT4 for Ian Lacey Racing. And Michael Cooper, who also had a win at Coda, lines up on the second row of the grid alongside Jared Andretti. Two McLarens there who should be very strong here this weekend. Blistering conditions, but everyone up and ready for the task here this afternoon, Greg. Yeah, I don't think temperature, I don't think anything like that is going to upset anybody this weekend because everybody's at a racetrack again and uh, ready to get after it. And this is one of the great ones as well, isn't it? I mean, this track presents so many fabulous challenges, Cal. And uh, it's, it's one that, are, it, it's truly a driver's track, isn't it? It really is. It gives you a little bit of everything. Has a lot of challenges, certainly from a setup perspective as well. You've got some long stretches uh, where horsepower and uh, low drag will certainly come into effect down the front stretch and then two back straightaways. One, we call it a straightaway, but threading up through those uh, high speed S's is something that every driver certainly enjoys. And then you've got the long run down the back stretch to the roller coaster with big brake zones involved as well. So you need the car to be performing. It needs to be good in the medium and high speed corners and also need to be a little bit compliant to deal with some of these curbs around here as well. And a lot of the very fast corners have somewhat blind approaches and I think one of the trickiest corners, I mean the you know the run through the uh, the climbing S's and the drop down through the roller coaster, all great, but turn 10 uh, is just one of the absolute trickiest corners and it's so fast. It's really quick and then if you get too greedy into 11, uh, the break zone and lining up for Oak Tree can really catch you out. And if you get out in the dirt there, sometimes it's hard to pull the car back in and you can end up in that tire wall. So you have to be careful. So everyone tries to uh, eke out a little bit more in that corner and find a couple of tents possibly with the exit out of Oak Tree, but can bite you pretty quickly. There's the start stand where everything will unfold here as they make the run down into the first uh, sequence of corners. And this track, in a way, kind of presents uh, about two-thirds of it. It's just wide open, fast stuff. But from one all the way through the exit of the first group of S's, it's pretty technical. It really is. That's where you need the car to be uh, good with change of direction. It needs a pretty stiff platform there so the car reacts to the steering input that you're giving it. But at the same time, you can't run the car too stiff because you do need to use a little bit of the curbs through there to get through there effectively in terms of lap time as well. Speaking of lap time, uh, boy, I'll tell you, that qualifying session, uh, really, really stout and fun to watch. It looked like Spencer Pompelli, I, I, you were talking about it, had that bit of a margin. But... I think we are in for an absolute war in the AM category today here, the way that those times checked in. Oh, it was really, really close there, Greg. I think we had top six cars separated by about four tenths, and uh, and that's between the two championship leaders. Another great performance by Michael Dynan, who's really finding his feet now in this GT4 competition, particularly aboard that new for him this year, Aston Martin Vantage GT4. He sits on the pole, and the guy that he shared a win with in terms of he won one race and Paul Terry won the other, certainly uh, looks strong as well. But he's back in sixth position, but only four tenths off the pole position time. Here's Dynan in that 210. Quinlan, Sean Quinlan, who has really been coming on lately as a driver, had a great run last year in the uh, Sprint X category with Greg Leofoge, uh, really finding form by himself. You take a look at the uh, Aston Martins that are here. The drivers really, really seem to like those cars, think they make a great GT4 package. And uh, then you got Jeff Courtney, He's joining us this year there in that Kendra Rex stuff car, but a Mercedes this year after campaigning Maseratis for quite some time. Uh, so it's going to be interesting, but a surprise for me to see Paul Terry back where he was in that uh, you know he's going to come up to the pack. Yeah, he's always a great racer. He's super aggressive, and uh, he loves this race car as well, and Red and Racing have done a great job. Got a lot of cars out uh, performing here this weekend, so expect him some, to make some moves early. But Jason Bell lines up fourth in the AM division there, and uh, what a busy weekend. He's going to be competing eight times <laughs> this weekend, so hopefully he can keep his head on straight and recognize which car he's getting into as he'll uh, debut in the sport club uh, event here tomorrow as well. Absolutely, and we also uh, just wanted, you saw a car there right near the back of the field, Christopher Gumprecht, want to welcome him as he makes his debut in SRO America competition in the CG Racing Mercedes AMG. Uh, as a driver with a lot of open wheel experience, particularly in Formula 2000 category cars. And he has, uh, in 17, he had four starts in the US F4 championship, also runs SCCA Formula Continental. But uh, this is a big foray for him stepping into some very quick GT4 machinery. So uh, I think it's really, it should be a fascinating over, race. We're yeah. supposed to do 
post-race interviews with the winners. Frank Gannett there as well, but uh, another guy to keep an eye on here, we've been watching him, is Jeff Burton, who uh, in the Audi last year for Reardon Racing, put up some pretty solid runs and uh, at Sonoma, you know, had a great win in class in the uh, in the SX category, the GT4 SX, teamed up with Vesco Kozarov, but here he qualifies third and right in that window of that four tenths yeah. spread at the front. Yeah, and he gained a lot of confidence uh, through those performances last year, so I expect to see a very strong 2020 season for Jeff Burton. Now we're back underway. It's only our second event of the year with the uh, lockdown with the COVID crisis and pandemic, but uh, everyone is ready to go. Some of these teams have been doing a little bit of testing in the lockdown. It has been allowed, so some of the teams have been busy, and they come out of the box very strong here this weekend. Here's a look at uh, Mr. Pesek, James Pesek, a little bit farther back in the field. He's a pro driver. Uh, only got a ninth place overall qualifying effort. He'll be looking to move up just a little bit uh, here as well, but great to have PF Racing back in the fold and getting ready to go. You also saw Mark Clennon, and since it's been a while, since the opening round at Coda, you look at Mark's car, it's certainly not the McLaren he's been running the last couple of years. They've switched and run, uh, gone over to that Sin GT4, which we have seen Cal put on some exceptionally uh, fast race winning runs in the hands of a few different drivers. And I think the reason Mark did that is that they felt the car just suited his driving style a little bit better, yes? Yeah, I think with the McLaren, they felt that with all of the electronic aids that that McLaren GT4 machine has, it was kind of masking just the true craft of driving the race car. And they feel that with Mark now back with this SIN machine, that it really makes him focus more on his driving and not rely on those electronic aids. So certainly talking to the crew, uh, we haven't spoken to him here this weekend, but talking to him the Makota, they seem to feel it was really a good way forward for them. And we talked uh, that pole position for Spencer Pompelli going back up. The team itself, the racers group, has just a mega record here uh, over the years at Virginia International Raceway, starting back in 2008 with a 1-2 finish in uh, Grand Am GT and the old Pontiac GTO right. cars. And they have been front runners ever since. Uh, and uh, as recently as 2017, they won a class here in the then Pirelli World Challenge Championship. Uh, so they've certainly got some pace. You're getting a look there at Mr. Bell driving for GMG. Well, of course, that's James Safronis Global Motorsports Group. And that's a team with uh, probably more experience in Pirelli World Challenge and now SRO Motorsports America than any team on the grid anywhere. Yeah, and as you'd expect, uh, the car looks immaculate. Yes. James is certainly very much up in terms of the presentation of the team and the whole group. Always does an excellent job and uh, juggles a lot of balls in the air at the same time. GMG have been very busy. They shut down for a couple of weeks, but since that time, they've been operational with all their aftermarket and uh, work that they do in the shop other than just their racing program. So it's been a busy time for them as they've now regrouped and getting ready for racetrack activity once again. And on Drew Stavely, one last time, just, uh, you know, He's one of those guys that you you find every once in a while that's in an AM car and you go eventually he's got to get moved you know he, you know he it's got to happen. Well, it happened this year. And what does he do? He shows up at the first race of the weekend uh, or of the season at Circuit of the America and was just quick right out of the box, pole, win, fast lap over some pretty stout pros. And it was like, yeah, he was ready to make the move. He was. <laughs> and uh, Michael Cooper turned the tables the next day. But you could tell from Drew's body language after the second race, he was expecting to win that one as well. So he's not intimidated by running around guys like Pompelli and Cooper. And he's right. going to uh, certainly make is part of the uh, pro championship this year, I think. Speaking of Pompelli and Cooper, let's hope we get a, uh, a new version of what they did in uh, race one at uh, Circuit of the Americas, where Pompelli hounded Cooper virtually the entire race and then laid that late pass on uh, to take second right at the end. Just an absolutely phenomenal race between those two, and I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen again. No, uh, you know, whenever Michael and uh, Spencer were in a race, we saw it last year with Ian James who took the championship. Those three put on quite the, the clinic in terms of race craft and uh, just sheer speed as well. So we expect a lot more of the same. And there you see Spencer. Spoke to him just a short while ago after his qualifying run. He said the car is really good when it's relatively cool. It's a warmish weekend here, ambient in the 80s, but it's very humid. And he said once we get temperature, he said we start to lose a bit of power compared to the turbo cars in the field. So he was very happy to grab the pole. Hopefully he can get the jump at the start and control the race from the front because he doesn't want to be behind cars, which will uh, obviously affect his uh, cooling on the engine and the rads getting that 
uh, very important air to the front end of that Porsche Cayman during the early going here. We were told we might have two formation laps here, so we'll see if that, in fact, plays out. Lights will go out coming out of turn 11, uh, which essentially is the oak tree turn. So we'll keep an eye on that for the, uh, the pace field goal. I was going to ask you, when you have that scenario, when you've got a car that, when it's a little cooler, it's fast, so you don't want to get behind cars where you're getting the disrupted air into the radiators, as you said. Do you want to go out and build as big of a lead as you can before that power drop off and then hope you can fend them off? Or do you try and, and not rev it quite as much, keep it a little cooler? Uh, you know, what's the trade out there? What do you think? I would think if you could do it with uh, controlling power, so maybe not running it uh, totally maxed out on the RPM, but use the tire. It's a new tire from Pirelli here this year compared to what we had last year. So it's a little bit of an unknown, even though we had uh, some practice over the last couple of days here. Everyone has given a thumbs up in terms of its performance and durability. So if the car is giving you good, consistent performance with low tire degradation, then maybe use the car up through the corners to get your lap time. And if you can, save a little bit in the engine department. But uh, Spencer's pretty savvy. I'm sure he's just going to want to try and get the lead. The first box to tick is to get the lead down yeah. in turn one. But he's got that powerful Ford Mustang right alongside him with Bruce Staple, who's obviously thinking the other way around. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see the play coming out of turn 17 and uh, when they throw that green. And keep in mind, when the green comes out, you can pass anywhere on the track on the start. And that's what everybody's going to be kind of eyeballing here. If you take a look at that racers group, number 66, the LaSalle Solutions, Adobe Road Winery, and the racing series of Ryan's car with that chrome on it, uh, it too, racers group is a team that turns their cars out in immaculate form. And uh, I'll tell you what, they've been busy, the racers group and Adobe Road Wines, in the, uh, in the break here doing virtual wine tastings, which I think is interesting. And that racing series wines is uh, really, the world is uh, pretty impressed with it. Uh, it's beautiful stuff. <laughs> I've had the odd glass or two myself and uh, Kevin Buckler. Whatever he does is first class, and certainly his wineries have uh, won a lot of awards. And uh, Kevin's pretty innovative. He's figured out a way to uh, maintain his brand image and uh, get their name out there. So look at Sean Quinlan and uh, Steve Cameron Race Products, Cameron Racing Products, BMW. Very strong performance. Yeah, great qualifying. Run, yeah, right? second in AM and uh, only a couple of, well, Basically, just over a tenth off the pole for the M class with Michael Dine and just grabbing that. So expect uh, a strong performance here. He really learned a lot under the tutelage of Gregory Fuse, who will uh, co-drive with in the Sprint X competition a little bit later in the afternoon. Of course, they come in here as a... Um, he's a champion from last year in the... Sprint X category of the National Championship in the Pro-Am division with Greg Leifuge. So uh, he's... But you could see it. Last year was that breakout year for him, and uh, he really has shown some great speed. And uh, it's going to be fun to watch him unfold with these guys. How careful does Michael Dynan have to be here in his car? Because it turns out uh, the car that they, one of the cars they were going to run in the Sprint X division, ended up with an issue. They have to run this car in all six races. Six races. So, patience? He, uh, <laughs> yes. I mean, you got to be thinking big picture. He has the championship lead now. He's got a lot of confidence. The team is tested here. Uh, he's put it on the pole position. So, everything is going well, other than the problem they had with their second car yesterday, which meant they've had to elect to uh, qualify this car for all of the races here this weekend. So, yeah, very, very good point, Greg, and he has to factor that in. But he's young. He's got great tutelage from the Flying Lizard group. And um, certainly his teammate, Robbie Foley, uh, who he runs with in Sprint X competition, will be <laughs> reminding him, yes. I want to get in that car a little bit later this afternoon. And let's not forget, it was here last year where we had that monster incident uh, exactly. heading into this very next corner down into the start of the roller coaster. So I'm sure that's in the back of his mind as well. Lights are out on the Acura NSX safety vehicle. So we are going green here in the third round of Pirelli GT4 America Sprint competition. Uh, when they come out of turn 17, hogs pen as they call it, because back in the day before there was a racetrack, there was a hogs pen over there. This was just farmland. And uh, looking forward to getting this underway again, racing again after a four month hiatus for the pandemic. Lots of protocols put in place. Very serious about uh, looking out for everybody's well being here. Uh, but when you're racing, uh, racers, you want to race, and everybody's playing into it. Okay, here we go. Gonna watch that safety car will make its way in, and uh, it's all down to Papelli and Stavely on the outside. This is gonna be fascinating to watch, as you said, at the one. Yeah, and it's all about getting that engine right in its own sweet spot so you can accelerate and have plenty of gear left to uh, make that initial jump. 
Spencer's controlling it pretty late, and off he goes. Let's see. Stavely looked like he timed it pretty well. Andretti getting an actual launch as well. But boy, Spencer had just enough in hand. He's got the inside as they head down into turn one. Now he pops to the outside. Stavely has to defend it. Look at Andretti around the outside, Cal. Yeah, well, I expected him to do that. He's used to running those very short sprint races and uh, midget races, and he's up on the wheel early as normal. Now he looks to the inside of Michael Cooper. Relatively cool tires. Got to be careful here. Michael gives it to him as he washes out a little bit, but gives him some nice racing room. That was close, but respectful by both of them. And a great, he was just riding the cushion. He's used <laughs> to doing that a lot. And, uh, hasn't been able to do a lot of sprint racing either here. Uh, sprint midget racing in the uh, in the the break we've had. So we can see that rust fell off fast. Yeah, I'm not sure if he was reading my mind or I was reading his <laughs> in terms of what was going to happen there down into turns one and two. Dynan holding on to the lead over Quinlan. Dynan in that black Aston Martin. Quinlan in the orange and blue. BMW there. And Bell sitting a uh, snuck around Burton. And Bell has moved up into third. Yeah, and he's looking pretty tidy there. So again, for him, he's got to really uh, manage his weekend very carefully. He's going to be doing eight starts. Just remarkable stuff, but he's been doing some testing out at Thermal. And uh, spoke to James Sofronis last week. He feels that Jason is going to be up to the task here this weekend. As now we look at those two McLarens battling it out down Madison Avenue, the backstretch. Oh, look at this. Late move by Andretti. Deep on the brakes, heading into turn 13, 14, and the roller coaster. And he's through. Beautiful move, Andretti, as you said, Cal up on the wheel early and I thought I saw Burton have a little bit of an issue exiting the oak tree turn may have given Courtney a chance we'll watch for that but this is compelling stuff up front it really is and uh, the key there is that Andretti made the move to the left if you try and make the move to the right sometimes it's hard to uh, get that pass completed so uh, Drew Stavely may have learned something there in terms of if uh, Michael Cooper gets a similar run maybe be a bit more defensive to the left side of the road and it's okay to defend as long as you do it before the guy behind you makes a move. And you can easily just drift over a little bit. But uh, boy, Andretti is through. And looking at the rest of the field as they come by start finish, Courtney was not able to take advantage of that little bobble by Burton. And uh, Burton hangs on to fourth in the AM class, running eighth overall right now. Andretti was uh, really, really quick here last year. I mean, relatively early in the season, they learned the art of getting one of the GT4 cars up to speed relatively quickly for Andretti Autosport is here that he really shone had a really nice race going until he uh, ran into a bit of a tire issue and uh, that cost him a victory but uh, gave him a lot of confidence and he realizes that he can mix it up with the best in the business in this GT4 category he makes his moves early he was fastest in practice yesterday probably a little bit disappointed that he qualified off the front row to be honest with you but nonetheless in the early going got it up to uh, second position but Spencer has a nice little bit of breathing room here can really just focus on his lines not having to uh, defend too much but I think the big thing Spencer's going to be looking at is not just that rear view mirror that water temperature gauge he said that is a real key factor in terms of the performance of that Porsche on this relatively warm weekend and look here that pink car that is the pro driver of uh, Pesic and behind him is the Reardon Racing Aston Martin in the hands of Paul Terry, a winner at uh, Circuit of the Americas. And it looks like Courtney this time might be trying the outside move, and that's exactly what you're talking about, Cal. You can get alongside, but it sets you up completely wrong with that little bend into the motor. Well, that's the key, right? It's where you want to be late on the brake pedal. You have to sort of like start to ease on them because the road's starting to turn. And if you just wait and go straight there, you're going to run out of room and then there's too much turning to get done. So you have to arc over to the left a little bit, which means you've got to get out of the power and start to brake a little bit. As we see a little bit of ride there for Jason Bell, Bell unfortunately. Out of third. Well, this is, but I'm not sure if he'd had a previous moment because I don't see any traffic around him. So this is almost like he'd had an earlier delay on this lap and then coming in there by himself. Ooh. Yeah, he must have had an issue because he was well behind the field. Yes. He may have, in that scenario, he may have dirtied up the tires, so then when he got into this section of track, he just didn't have the grip. And I'm, this is what I was getting to is I think right now Paul Terry is desperate to get by James Pesek, so he's he got to get it, up I and run to a nice move. Yeah, got to the inside. He timed that perfectly, and the Aston Mountain was working well. Vesco Coswell obviously working with the whole team. And uh, we hop on about Vesco's. Uh, Engineering prowess, but he is certainly oh. very good at dialing one of these race cars in. Touring car champion a couple of years back, and uh, has always been a race winner in whatever he does, and he's just quick. 
Jones. I think the key with Paul Terry is he, he showed last year that he's got a lot of speed, or he's shown in previous seasons, as a matter of fact. Uh, but he had that odd moment where, you know, he really just didn't seem to be focused enough. And I think with this Aston Martin, I think it's a more consistent performer. I think the braking on the car is a lot more consistent, which is an area that he seemed to get into, uh, having problems with in, in years past. But I think last year running the Celine Cup and just uh, Getting a lot more seat time has given Paul Terry the confidence coming into this race. And as we take a look, that's Frank Gannett, who has dropped off the back of the field just a little bit. Let's meet the third member of our broadcast team. Let's get down to the pits and Ryan Moran. Hey, bud. Hey, guys. So great to be back with you once again. Uh, just had a quick update. You guys mentioned the problems for Jason Bell on track. He came in a moment ago. The GMG racing crew took a quick look at the car, brushed a little grass off the grill and sent him back out. So it seems like crisis has been averted, at least in the, the major sense, but obviously a bit of a setback. And as you said, he's got a huge program throughout this whole year and this weekend specifically. So taking care of the race car, taking care of himself, that's going to be crucial. Without question. And the other part of it is it's got to be disappointing after one of his best qualifying mm. efforts ever to have that little bit of an issue early. But we've watched him over the last couple of years. Every time we see him, it's a little bit more pace, a little bit more pace. And uh, he's really coming along. Yeah, and I'm not sure what happened early in the lap because he was right in the mix in right. a gaggle of cars, and then suddenly we saw him go off by himself. So there was a moment earlier in that lap, so I'm not sure if someone made a move on and roughed him up a little bit, and sometimes that can just frazzle you a little bit. And then, as you said, you might have had dirt on his tires when you got into that brake zone for the roller coaster and had that second off. But good that they got the car back to the pit lane. That second off was obviously near the pit lane entry, so you pack the radiator grill up with the, the grass here at VIR, you're not going to last very long, particularly with the high ambient temperature that you did dealing with already. Pompelli, last time by start finish, 1.3 seconds in hand over Andretti. And he currently uh, would be the guy who would uh, earn the award, a new one for the season, the CrowdStrike Fast Lap. And it's the fastest overall race lap. Currently, it's uh, Mr. Pompelli. Uh, but Mr. Andretti, just in the last lap, was literally a tenth of a second off of Pompelli's uh, pace here in, in the best lap department. So they're very, very close right now. Uh, in those times, but uh, again, Spencer doing what he needed to do just to get that little bit of margin of the key nice cool air uh, relatively uh, here in a, a warm tropical VIR. Yeah, but it's a long race. You look at the clock there, 42 minutes plus still to go, so it's early days, and uh, Spencer knows that, so he'll be pacing himself, and now Jarrett's got clear of the little. Uh, race that he was involved in with Stavely and Cooper. He's probably pacing himself as well. A lot to be learned here with this new tire. How does it work over the long green flag run compared to what they ran here last year? So lots to learn here as we get back to racing once again. It's great to be saying that, Greg, after the fourth yes. month, four month break that we've had. Uh, it truly is. Uh, in the AMP category, running fifth overall, Dynan leads it. Um, interestingly, just setting his best lap of the race at a 57-2, but Jeff Burton and uh, Courtney both have 157 ones, so there's some guys with some serious pace. And actually, uh, Mr. Terry, uh, he just turned a 157 flat as did Tessa, so these guys are moving. Yeah, and I think the key for these drivers is really focusing here because uh, fast laps in the races set you up for your grid position for the following day, so. Um, Right now, Spencer Bumpali had the pull here today. He's got fastest lap going right now. And uh, that would give him that very important pole position, particularly when he's trying to mo monitor and manage those engine temperatures. That is really crucial for him to uh, be up on the front row at least. Yeah, Terry right now would have fast lap at the provisional pole in the AMP category. And he's coming after Courtney. Uh, he is closing in on the back of Jeff Courtney right now uh, as he's driving away from uh, Pesic at this stage. So this is going to get interesting. We could very easily here uh, in the margin right now, Dynan to Quinlan is less than a second, then less than a second to Burton, less than half a second to Courtney. And uh, so we could very easily here have, look at this here, is Courtney yeah, got a he's great on the left run side. on Burton. Yeah, Jeff left in the uh, left Ooh. side of the straightaway, and that's the key. And now Jeff completes that pass. So uh, Jeff is certainly one of the cleanest racers in our paddock, so he makes a nice move there and takes that Mercedes AMG up a notch in terms of position. And now he can set his sights on Quinlan up ahead of him. So a good, strong run here for Jeff Courtney. Boy, and when uh, Burton made that transition to try and get that little toe and think about a repass going in, I don't know that there was a piece of paper between those guys. And here comes Terry. Yeah, that's his teammate. 
Terry just got a really good launch there through Hogpen, and uh, you have a little bobble there and you're not on it, it really affects your whole speed. And the stretch down into this turn one break zone, great part of the racetrack here, you just have to be super disciplined in placement of the car. Don't ask too much from it, otherwise you'll just lose track time. Having a good look here at Mr. Courtney, what are you hearing in pit lane, Ryan? Well, actually, this is going back to something I heard from Jeff himself earlier this week. I had a chat with him, and you have to remember, even though he is a veteran in this series, he is very new to this race car. He campaigned that Maserati for forever, finally put it out to pasture, and uh, brought in this Mercedes-AMG GT4. And he said he was really upset with their performance at Circuit of the Americas. He felt like they left a ton on the table, and he was so anxious to get back to racing. So it seems like that transition is starting to pick up a little bit. I know he did about a half a day of testing during the quarantine period, and he was just chopping at the bit to get back on track. Yeah, he's such a racer, and, uh, you know, he was looking forward to it. And obviously uh, his long-term teammate who's run with him a lot, Fred Roberts out of Canada, not able to make the uh, the trip here due to s some of the travel restrictions and the like. And that's one of the reasons that in some of the classes, the fields are a little bit smaller uh, than they would have been otherwise. It's just travel restrictions that people uh, are, are trying to deal with. And uh, that's too bad. But Courtney, uh, yeah, they made, and I'll tell you what impressed me about Courtney was driving that Maserati the last couple of years when all these other cars now, is that Cooper? limping into turn 14. Shout out to his teammate and uh, team leader, Tony Gaples, who's not competing here. First time he's missed a race since 2017. And uh, he had to have emergency eye surgery recently. And uh, we hope to see him back at the next event at Sonoma. So Tony, if you're watching, we miss you in the paddock, mate, and uh, look forward to your recovery and seeing you back on the racetrack. Yeah, Ooh, this big brave move here by Gumprecht, who's starting to pick up some speed and then overshoots. Got way too far to the inside, and not a lot of grip down in there. Looks like Callen just overshot the corner. Yeah, fortunately, uh, no contact there, but a bit of a brave move. And uh, with these cars, they have ABS, and if you get into that, basically take some of the braking force away, and you're along for a ride. We can confirm it as Cooper has dropped down the order here. There's some kind of technical glitch. He just suddenly slowed on that long run from Oak Tree into the roller coaster. Uh, getting back to Tony, you talked about first time he's missed a race since 2017. This is the first time he's missed an entire event since he started racing in World Challenge. And he's got uh, over 150 career starts. So that gives you an idea of just how long it's been. Yeah, it's got to be strange to be observing <laughs> and yes. uh, not participating. He's one of the great characters in the paddock and a long-term, really intense supporter of probably World Challenge and now SRO America. Uh, just a, that Black Dog team has been a stalwart and uh, it's appreciated in this, as you said. Back to the action here, we're trying to find out obviously what happened to Cooper. As we take a look at James Pesek, uh, he's found a little speed. He dropped back just a little bit. Now he's starting to up the ante and gets to the inside. Burton was defending just a little bit and uh, Pesek was having none of it, but he got trapped there and he just couldn't make the pass stick and let Burton come right back around the outside, Cal. From the move that Courtney had made on Jeff, so uh, Jeff had rethought that process through <laughs> and uh, come up with an alternative plan if it was to happen again. See uh, Pesic there, just a little bit wide there, coming through that final corner. The Black Dog Speed Shop crew going to work here on this turbocharged McLaren engine. I'm not sure if a clamp has come loose and he just dropped power and they're trying to tighten everything up there, just conjecture at this stage. Yeah, they've got some issue there. That sure looks like, uh, looks like that could be, uh, they got some moisture down there as well. So that's a tough break for Mr. Cooper, who obviously is a serious player in this championship. He's already run three championships in Pirelli World Challenge. Yeah, and uh, just really d hate to see this because, um, you know, we've lost a few of the rounds with the lockdown and, uh, you know, the season is going to be more compressed and every event is going to be super critical here as the team just gets the tailpiece put back down and just trying to get him out there. With it being three races here this weekend, yes, you want to get him back out there, but secondly, you want to find out what the problem is and get it fixed. Right, and if they can get him out and have him throw down a lap, 
uh, to get him set up for for a good start in tomorrow's race as well. And it's a, there's got to be a double gut punch because he comes in tied to the leading points. And you see that sort of evaporate out of here. Boy, for Spencer Papelli, he is working the program perfectly, isn't he? He's worked that lead now up to over two seconds, 2.2 seconds, giving himself that buffer. It looks like Stavely might be coming alive just a little bit and start occupying Jared Andretti's mindset just a bit. Yeah, going to have to let it evolve a little bit. We're still only just over 15 minutes into this 50-minute uh, sprint race, but it looks like Andretti's car has kind of stalled back a little bit in terms of its performance. So uh, let's see if that deteriorates any more, which would give Spencer a bigger lead and maybe allow Drew to start to really put the pressure on for that second position. Pesek now has made the pass and worked his way around Burton. And again, James runs in the pro category, so he's fourth in that category right now, but he'll have another overall position to make up and it's going to be fun here to see on that lap when Gumprecht um, had that little bit of a bobble uh, he set fast lap in the AM category or one of the fastest laps, 56.9 so that was a great lap Terry has a 56.9 but Courtney right now is a 56.6 Cal in the AM category uh, hugely important for next race yeah very much so and uh, the team will be uh, keeping you up to speed on that and if you find a little gap and you've got the sweet spot left in the tires and uh, the fuel burners you know take a little bit of weight on the cars you can certainly potential to lay down your fastest lap of the race here about halfway through real strategy to that if you get mired in a pack and uh, you haven't laid down a fast lap you almost need to back everyone up a little bit and then take a run back at the pack we see Stavely now getting a good run on Andretti down Madison Avenue, that long back stretch. It looked to me like he was really patient setting up his exit out of Oak Tree, and that's what you've got to do. Looked like he just gained yeah. about a car length there in about the first third of the straightaway, and then maybe the McLaren stretches it back out a little bit further. Again, turbocharged engine going up against the normally aspirated Mustang. That McLaren certainly uh, would appear to be a little bit more slippery. The higher the speed goes, the higher the rate of compression of the air on the nose of the car, and the drag and the like, and uh, that might be where that car uh, really has its strength is uh, at the end of the acceleration run. Yeah, it seems like right there, mid straightaway, just pulls a little bit on the Mustang. It seems like Drew, just the torque, and maybe it's just the gear ratio is better suited to get through Hogpen. Got a really good run there on Jarrett, but not really able to do anything with it, even with the slipstream effect from the car in front of you. Jarrett's been busy uh, in this lockdown promoting his uh, father's John book, Racer, written by the author Jake Gers, who we know well from uh, his PR days, working with uh, the Mazda program recently. And uh, it's a wonderful book and uh, really a testimony to uh, John Andretti's uh, racing life. Oh, look at this. Great, great battle here. Yeah, that was obviously uh, John. He was an all-rounder uh, and one of the really great ones. Anything he did, he drew, including top fuel dragsters. He gave that a go and had some success in it. That's impressive stuff. Yeah, he, he was the ultimate racer. Just lived and breathed him. We saw that in his last uh, few months here at the racetrack. The way he supported Jared's racing program was right in there, you know, making anything that needed to happen happen in terms of getting the car to the grid, getting everyone up to speed, chasing everything, working on the PR angles with all of his partners. So um, just a, a great man and we'll miss him dearly. All right, we've got an update coming about Mr. Michael Cooper, but first, look like again, Stavely got a great run out of Oak Tree, but then he hits that part where that uh, McLaren of Andretti just gaps him a little bit, so as things settle again, let's get back down to Ryan. What happened? Well, checked in with the Black Dog Speed Shop team, and it sounds like Michael lost boost, so Calvin, your speculation was spot on. It was something to do with uh, the turbo system. He came in, as you guys saw, they took the, the hood off or the bonnet off, and went to work and just had to tighten something with the inlet manifold is what I was told by uh, Ray Sorensen, who is the team manager for Black Dog Speed Shop. So they did get that tightened up and sent him back out, but certainly a gut punch at coming off of that great start to the season at Circuit of the Americas where Michael was, uh, he won one of the races and actually came out of there tied for the points lead. Thanks very much, Ryan. Yeah, tough, tough moment here, boy, Stavely. For a minute there, I thought maybe he overran turn one just a little bit, but he just did the wide in and then uh, cutback move, trying to get a really good run. He's flowing speed through there. He 
Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, Jared Andretti, you know, he's certainly entitled to do what he's doing. He's not being super defensive or anything. It's just the nature of this racetrack that is tough to pass in certain areas where it seems like Drew Stavely has the advantage. And uh, what he's doing is allowing Spencer Pompelli to eke out that gap up front a little bit further. This is what we talked about hypothetically a couple of laps ago. Is Jared Andretti starting to drop off the pace a little bit? I think that's the case. I think Stavely, if he was in clean air, may be able to run the same pace as Pompelli. Catching him is another matter, but I think he's probably got the pace of Pompelli but can't do anything with it right now. That might be a little bit of a reason for some urgency here for Stavely to try and figure out somewhere to be able to get through. And he gets out of here well, but then he just doesn't have at the end of the straight to speed. So he was trying to do things a little differently in the technical parts of the track. And you have to adapt. I mean, if, if your battle plan isn't working, you got to kind of come up with a new battle plan. And uh, he just hasn't been able to find that way quite through yet. And there again, you could just see that demonstrated through the middle part of the straightaway. The McLaren just uh, eats away a little bit. Jared's a pretty canny competitor. He, he may just feel in the middle part of this race, this is where he really, really needs to conserve. Of course, if you get a, a caution or something and get back on the tail of Spencer Papali, you want something to uh, work with as he drops wheels off a hog pen. It's one of the things, this is a beautiful track, but uh, on the edge of the track, you don't have a lot of paved runoff. And you get those wheels too far off, then you just go on these slides through the grass here. He was lucky to avoid that happening. And we're watching uh, Courtney now. He has trimmed that lead, that margin to Quinlan. Courtney in that white and blue with orange highlights. Mercedes, their third car in your frame, coming up in the back of Quinlan in the orange and blue BMW. That margin uh, down to half a second, and it opened up just a little bit again. And Jeff uh, started to find some pace. And in so doing, he was able to draw away from uh, Paul Terry, who was right there with him for a while. But I wonder, Cal, if in Terry's fight to get up and around uh, Pesic and uh, some of the other competitors, if he maybe drove those Pirellis a little too hard. Yeah, it's quite possible, as I said. It's a, it's a bit of a learning curve as we get back to racing here this year. Um, just exactly what these tires need and how you need to deal with your starting tire pressures and everything like that. So maybe in the uh, case of the Andretti Autosport McLaren there, maybe they start a slightly higher tire pressure to get that energy in the tire early. We saw him able to make some moves in the opening lap, certainly. And maybe then they just peak and you're not getting the grip that you're looking for in this mid part of the race. As we start to approach the halfway point. Just watch Stavely all the way at the exit at 10. Look like he really picks the throttle up aggressively and soon, and it gets him into a position to uh, make that run through Oak Tree. But again, at the end of that long climbing straight, it just doesn't quite have it. You can see him there, even sort of like looking for a little bit of air to the front end of that Mustang. So maybe he's close on temperatures as well. So maybe in terms of pace, he's being stymied, but also he's running in that dirty air, that hot air from the McLaren in front of him. That time, Jared a little bit cleaner, mindful of what happened the last time down through turn 17 and uh, making it work. Meanwhile, up front, the margin now three and a half seconds, essentially, for Spencer Pompelli. And he's got to be absolutely delighted at this point. And again, there's still a lot of time left, and we're just coming up to halfway. But you've been able to build up a three and a half second margin that gives you a little bit of a cushion, doesn't it? Uh, to be able to, uh, to deal with here in the latter part of the race. It really does, and uh, it's hard to say you, you've got to sort of bounce back, but it wasn't the best of opening weekends for Spencer at Coda. Uh, had a run up finish on the first day, but off the podium in the second day. So he comes into just the third round of the championship, 10 points behind. And uh, that's a big deficit, but with Michael Cooper's problems, and he can see. Drew Stavely, a long way back, that will give him those 10 points back in a hurry. So <laughs> suddenly yeah. Spencer could find himself tied for the championship after this round here. Right there, he really, Stavely just seems to get to the throttle early because he gets a big run going in. And Oak Tree here, Jared Andretti is kind of known for, he likes early turn in. And I would think that's a corner you want to square the exit up just a little bit more so you can get it straightened and get on that throttle hard. But he seems to make it work. I mean, look at the margin. Yeah, Jared has a very unique line that we started to see last year. We're thinking, how the 
how can he run the pace that he's running in what seemed to be such a compromising line? But they've just worked with, uh, spoke to uh, his crew last year about it, and uh, they just said, hey, we've got the car, so it'll do a lot of turn turning in the middle of the corner so Joe can run that line, which allows him to carry enormous entry speed into these corners, and that's just, just the way he likes to drive it. So uh, the team and the driver working well has been very effective for him. Back to this battle. Unfolding here is Courtney. She continues to try and move up and find a way around Sean Quillen. Now, this is the battle for second and third. Dynan is up the road. There he is. You can see the black Aston Martin right there uh, from uh, Flying Lizards. He leads it by a second and a half of Courtney and uh, Quinlan having this great battle for the second spot. And then a little bit of a margin back to Terry, uh, who sits fourth in the AM class. Here's that battle. And uh, Courtney looks like uh, he's just getting comfortably quicker he's been lapping nicely sits at a 156 seven essentially for fast lap of the race but uh, he's been in that 156 margin consistently as he's just closed up on Quinn. yeah and i think he has a very fast race car that's demonstrated by his lap times being about four tenths quicker than the leader so the real key is how and if he can deal with sean quinlan quickly enough that there's still time on the board to go chase down Michael Dynan because right now he's demonstrating that he's got the fastest car in the field right now but he's a super savvy guy he doesn't take big risks in making his move so Sean may need to make a little mistake here for uh, Jeff to make that move but nonetheless I think he's got the speed there's still enough time on the board to potentially forget about climbing one more step potentially win this race today well you talked about how he's one of the cleanest races out there and I also think he's one of the smoothest you, you don't see and if you're running as fast as he was in the Aston Martin without ABS without traction without any of that you only do that by being incredibly smooth and he actually said at Coda it was tough getting sort of zoned in with the ABS because that's not how he was used to driving when well, he's had some opportunity now but one of the things that I was getting in this heat that's going to be doing him big favors that smoothness for those tires it really is and the other thing is uh, he's exceptionally fit yeah. uh, and uh, this heat you know it's the first race of the weekend but as this weekend wears on it's going to take more and more of a toll on these drivers and that could have an effect in terms of their lap time as well and certainly their focus on not making mistakes we go 14 into the roller coaster. Just sort of drops away here. It's a tricky section of track because it almost seems to fall off camber in a couple of spots. And you have to have that car placed exactly right, don't you? You do. And you can see there, Sean got through there a little bit awkwardly. It looked like he just got up and over the curb, had a little bit of understick coming on the front straight away, which then compromises how early you can get back to the power. And uh, the Mercedes AMG GT4 machine right behind him in the hands of uh, Courtney is looking a little bit smoother. But I think the real key is going to be the last 10 minutes or so of this race when the tires start to uh, dig, uh, get a little bit more dig on them and uh, the performance isn't quite there. Just uh, keeping the car underneath you and not making that critical mental error when the car's performance is uh, fallen off a little bit may be the key to these final positions. He looks to the inside, not quite close enough. Well, I've been watching his line there, Cal, through particularly uh, through 2-3. He, he opens it up. He, he runs a wider attack line through there, and it just lets him flow speed. And Sean Quinlan looks to be keeping the edges a little bit tighter, which can you know, rob you of just a little bit of pace. And I think Jeff got through there and went, whoa, that was quick that time. And uh, Sean sensed it, it looked like, didn't he? And just was a little bit more center track as he got the approach into turn four. Yeah, he did, and uh, up through the high-speed section, that BMW from Stephen Cameron Racing, Steve, a uh, great racer himself in his day, certainly puts a good car underneath, Sean. The car's balance looked good there, but a few of the corners I've seen a lot of understeer very late in the corner in terms of seeing a lot of steering put left in the car. And uh, ultimately, that will then mean you get... Oh, oh spin there at the back. Paul Terry. Oh, he worked so hard to get in front. Mm. Oh, He's got to regroup here. That's a shame. He had a good, clean run going. One of our championship leaders coming into this race today, so uh, it's all about damage control now. Try and regroup. 20 minutes to go. Don't uh, magnify the problem by having another quick spin. Just uh, focus forward as we see this battle continuing for second place. Yeah, and when you have an issue like that for Paul Terry at this point, ooh, Courtney wide that time. <laughs> really? Tried to take a roll through there and tried to carry a bit more apex speed and uh, ran out of road. That will cost him. I don't think he'll be in position to go on the attack. So we see Michael Cooper back out there. 
Let's see what his lap times are looking like. It's about half a second off of Pampali's best today, so not ideal in terms of uh, getting up onto the front row for tomorrow. No, he's fourth. He would be fourth on the grid by my always questionable math here looking at it. I think for Terry right now, the mission is, is that's a long way for him now to have to come back, is just find, he's got a gap that you talked about. If there's anything left in those tires, try and throw in a really smooth, fast lap, because he needs something to help him out for the grid tomorrow. Yeah, uh, looking at Staveley, he's dropped way back here from Andretti as we now see Paul Terry pulling off here. So, not sure if that's another spin or some kind of technical issue, let's take a look. He said, don't compound the problem by uh, having another moment. Just gets a little bit wide, and uh, that's what you can't afford yeah. to do. If you're going to be a serious threat for this championship this year, those little errors, you've got to regroup. That was, uh, looks like the exit of turn three, wasn't mm -hmm. it, where he went? So Stavely has definitely dropped back from yes, Andretti, I thought. Well, maybe Andretti's gone back on the attack, but the gap between him and Pompelli remains just over three seconds, and Stavely's now two and a half seconds back of Andretti. So I'm not sure if he went on the attack and didn't make it stick and had a big moment himself, but whatever's happened has taken the pressure off of Andretti, allowing him to just focus on the well, leader up ahead. And his last lap was half a second quicker than Andretti. Attack, you know, it didn't, uh, the previous lap, it didn't uh, go wrong here for him. He's quicker again on this last lap, only by a tenth over Andretti now, as Courtney continues this attack. Yeah, good run there through Hog Pen. BMW's uh, pretty strong right here, not much to choose between them. Maybe about half a car length, but Sean just uh, inches out. What he thinks about it, looks down to the inside. That wasn't a serious attempt, just trying to rattle Sean a little bit, make him think that he's going to the inside and compromising Sean's approach to turn one and two. Now watch Sean's line here, much closer to the apex. That Courtney, that time, he was a little closer to the apex that time as well, but he just runs this wider line through. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sean goes in a little bit can. shallow there. Yeah. Two turn three, and that's uh, hurting his exit speed. And Courtney just comes rolling through there and realizes he's carrying a lot more momentum, but can't go anywhere with it because he's not quite close enough. So if Courtney can tighten up the gap between he and Quinlan as they approach turn three and get off a of turn two a little bit better, he may be able to make that stick eventually. Well, I was almost wondering if what he did going into turn one, you said it wasn't, you know, an actual attempt at a pass, but was he trying to get Quinlan to tighten up the entry into one and that, and thereby just slow him all the way through that to try and do something? I mean, you got to get creative, don't you? Yeah, I think what he needs to do is just really focus on his breaking point for turn one, get through that sort of double apex of first corner as best he can, and then be in the position to... Uh, you know, get through turn three a little bit more effectively that he's demonstrated here the last few laps and then be in a position to outbreak down to the inside for turn four. So it's really a chess match. You've got to set it up two or three corners before the move that you make. Sean Quinlan is certainly up to the pressure and uh, each lap you maintain that, you gain a little bit more confidence, Greg. And uh, right now he's thinking maybe I've got the... Uh, the ability to keep Jeff behind me here for the remaining 16 minutes in this race. Courtney's got other ideas, and I think his car has certainly got the speed, but as we said, as how quickly he could uh, get around Quinlan would affect his ability to win, and what's allowed is Michael Dynan to stretch the lead up front. Yeah, Dynan now, it's up to over three seconds, that margin. Yeah, he needed to dispose of Quinlan pretty effectively there to have the time to chase down the leader. So Michael Dynan going for his uh, second win out of three starts here in 2020. All right, watch this here. You can see just how much he flows speed. <laughs> you can see he wants to dive to the inside there. Yeah, that's we've seen be that work. Remember Mike Skeen a couple mm -hmm. of years ago uh, in another Mercedes, happened to be a GT3 car. But uh, everything's got to be absolutely right, you know, the perfect conditions to pull off that pass. But Courtney's working on it. Is, uh, typically to make that move through there, unless someone literally turns out of your way, uh, you're going to be trading some paint. And uh, fenders on that Merc are pretty expensive. <laughs> and, yeah, absolutely. And actually, it looked like that little exchange lost him just a little bit of room this time. But he makes up so much speed through those S's that by the time he gets to Oak Tree here, he's back within a car line. Well, I 
you if you do a half move and you don't make it stick, you typically lose half a second or so. So then it's just a question of regrouping. But you can see he's immediately back with him. So I think the pace is there. He'll probably be getting a little bit frustrated because if he was thinking like I was, like get around Quinlan, I can go after a um, Michael Dynan and win this race. He's realizing that Quinlan is really stymieing that uh, ability here this afternoon for a win. And one more time, they head into the roller coaster. And this is that section of track. And if you get too much curb, turn in a little too early down through turn 16 and then 17, as Dynan just on rails down through there. But here's what I'm talking about. And you can see Quinlan gets on that curb pretty good. Courtney runs wide, uh, well wide of it, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He doesn't use that inside uh, curb. And uh, these GT4 cars are not as aero-dependent as the GT3 machine that we'll see in action here a little bit later this weekend, but still can have a little bit of effect on the uh, front downforce and the splitter there as you're, you're coming through that corner. There's Jeff that this is where he needs to focus. He just needs to really focus on getting as tight to Quinlan as he can on this run up to turn three, and then just executing. He needs to be a little bit closer there. He runs that wide line. Oh, he's there. Now he's to the inside. Quinlan makes that critical mistake, runs a little bit oh. wide and sets it up. Well, Jeff had been working that, yeah. that move for laps, and that time just was absolutely smooth and precise in his run through there. As you said, Quinlan looked like he just got a little wide. Yeah, we didn't quite catch it on camera, but um, I think certainly coming off of turn two, he was as close as he'd ever been, Courtney, that is. And I think Quinlan just made that critical error, maybe try to carry a bit more speed, got up on the curbs. And uh, it's tough to pull it back on before Courtney had filled that gap and made the move. What a great chess match between those two for a lot of laps. That's what this is all about and it's great to be back at a racetrack and watching it unfold here now what did Courtney do he is going to be watching you can see there's 13 minutes left on the board so it took him about 10 minutes plus to get by Quinlan and uh, now the question is is there enough time on the clock for him to uh, a have the pace and then chase down Michael Dynan right now Courtney does have the fast lap in the AM class in this one, the uh, CrowdStrike fast lap for best overall lap still in the hands of the 66 right there. Spencer Pupel coming up on some traffic. That's uh, Mr. Jason Bell after that early issue he had, or double issue he had. Nice gentlemanly move there. Gives him that line. So certainly his crew would have been on the radio given Jason the communication that uh, the leader, Spencer Pompelli, was uh, getting close to him. Found a nice place to do it. I mean, trying to get out of the way through these high speed S's is very difficult, but uh, chose to do it there on the exit of turn three. Like Stavely's regrouped a little bit and uh, cut about a second of that gap that had been established by uh, Jared Andretti there for the second position. Courtney is uh, closing in on Dynan, took a few tenths out of that last sector. Jared right now. Solid second in that endurance warranty window world. Andretti Autosport cars there in the G3 racing. Racing Mustang is stably. This will be, it's going to be awfully important if Andretti gets around Bell for Stably to do it too, and I don't think he's close enough. Yeah, no, I think, uh, I think the key is going to be whether Andretti can uh, make the move before the roller coaster. If he doesn't, he could lose a few tenths there would be to Drew's advantage. Certainly not enough to get him by as well, but may make the gap a little bit closer. Take a look. Did he get through? He did not. So, nope. yeah, exactly what you were talking about, Cal. So, uh, Stavely will take that exchange. The key is now if uh, Andretti clears Jason down in the turn one break zone, where does Stavely have to uh, take care of the traffic as well? The one position I'm really focused on is uh, that battle for the AM class lead yeah. as well. Does Michael Dynan have anything in hand to uh, stave off the challenge of Courtney? Courtney's last lap was a 57 flat. Dynan was a 57.8. Now, as you talked about, that might be Dynan with that margin just sort of, uh, uh, he did a great job at Circuit of the Americas uh, managing tires early in the race. He wanted to have the speed at the end. And, uh, he learned that lesson well, and that might be what he's doing here. And Jason Bell let Stavely get through pretty cleanly in the uh, turn two, three area again. So Stavely, 
That march is now down to under oh. seconds. So. Probably uh, gained stably about two to three tenths there in that exchange. Dull Jason sublies. Bell just slowing dramatically here. This is more than just letting traffic through, unless he's doing a control alt delete on the car or something. But yeah, you just don't want a caution right now. And where he is, I don't see how they. It's a safe place oh. to do it. Yes. You know, I say it's coming out. It's before you get to the S's. So yep. I think that was just something going on technically with the car that he may have had to address there. Either that or a seatbelt or something uh, unusual has happened that he had to. Uh, get back together so we'll see what happened there from the GMG group but um, yeah still lots to play for here I think with uh, just under 10 minutes to go oh, and for Courtney that may have cost him just a little bit in that attack on Dinah here not much nice job by Jason recognizing he was coming just stay into the uh, inside let Courtney have that transition right to left side of the track that cost uh, Courtney four tenths in that oh sector alone, so that will uh, take a little bit of the pressure off Michael Dynan. Yeah. I think that Michael Dynan might have had a little bit in hand because his last lap he responded, so I'm sure that everyone there at Flying Lizard Motorsport are uh, getting on the horn to uh, Michael and saying, okay, you've got a different challenger from behind now. Courtney has got pace. You need to uh, use up whatever you have left in that race car. Pompelli, Andretti was a little bit quicker than Spencer last lap. But Pompelli just turned a 56 flat. Well, everybody else a 55.9 for Andretti, but then 56 threes from Stavely. So he's really managing this race beautifully. Yeah, so far so good for Spencer. Pole position, as I said, coming out of the first uh, event of this 2020 season with a 10 point deficit is not what he was looking for, but. He and the TRG group have responded magnificently with pace in that race car and controlled the race and managed it nicely. Got the jump at the start, took the pressure off, got that gap where you can just focus on your lines. And he told us he had to get clean air to the front of that Porsche. He's done that very effectively. Sizable point swing, first to second. Second on back, it's a lot slower. But, uh, so if you have an issue and you get a couple of guys that spring them together, uh, that really changes the dynamic, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It's a, it's a 10 point swing from first to third. So he came in 10 points behind Cooper and Stavely. Well, Cooper's having a, an unfortunate day and Stavely's currently third. So that this should tie un, unofficially at least Pompelli and Stavely at the top of the charts as we head into the rest of the weekend. And Andretti, second in the points coming in and the, the second place finish any harm certainly in the uh, points as well you always want that bigger swing to the top but under seven and a half oh and terry another little bit of a moment taking a look is uh that 56 9 still terry's best watch it happen here he's coming in the same corner same he just spot. uh yeah, he didn't drop a wheel that time but just uh, he's carrying a lot of speed in it just seems like the rear balance in the car has gone away on him and uh, is that something possibly as he's turning in, he realizes he's going to push wide. So he, he's he, your breathe in a natural reaction is to breathe it a little bit. And if, could that be the classic where they call it TTO trailing throttle over steer? Yeah, I mean, if you're suddenly coming through there and you get more weight uh, distribution to the front and you know, throw weight forward by lifting off the gas or whatever, a bit more abruptly than you had before. Uh, inertia as you're turning in the corner, very easy to lose the res this late in the going. You know, you got 40, uh, almost 45 minutes on these tires right now. These are the tires that you qualified on as well. So easily to have happened. And that's just how a race can unravel. You can go from one side of that line to the other in terms of podium finishes. And suddenly you look at the end of the day and you're just scratching your head and you're frustrated because just a few little uh, marginal moments uh, have cost you a good day. Good day, especially he's having one. As he continues, he's just managing that margin almost, it seems, Cal, at three seconds. It's been right in that window for a while. Then Andretti Stavely, there's the margin, your top three. Got that uh, flashing display on the windscreen. If it's flashing, which are the overall race leader. 
big thing is with the championship, with the different uh, complexion of the calendar, with uh, losing some events that were, you know, cancelled, and uh, doing these treble headers with the makeup weekends. If you have a good weekend, boy, can you make a big turnaround in the points? That's a very. But the converse is also true, isn't it? Which is <laughs> yeah. really un unpleasant at times. You can go backwards in a hurry as well. But Spencer just looking. Uh, as he always is, he's such a solid competitor. He, he does it with minimum of fuss, uh, but he's just so efficient, it seems, in extracting the most out of a race car and not making mistakes and just uh, really savvy, great racecraft. I was going to say, he's a great strategist. I mean, there are, are, are teams that use him on the box to call the race strategy at times as well, which is nice to have in the helmet in the car, isn't it? It is, because he's got the capacity to be driving a race car, basically a 10 tenth and thinking about other things in terms of the tires, the strategy of the race, uh, particularly when, you know, when you're doing uh, pit stop exchanges, if he's running sprint X competition or other endurance events, he's got all of those facets, and uh, that's a complete driver. You've got guys who can just wring the, the car's neck and uh, bring it home, so I don't know how I did it, but I'm quick. Yeah. And uh, Spencer's <laughs> able to tell you exactly what the car's doing, how he's extracting that performance, and also talk about what he should have done differently. He's reading the race uh, as he's uh, behind the wheel. Well, having obviously observed a lot of racing over the years, done a little, but observed a lot of it, one of the things that I've learned is you've got that, that raw speed component to a really great driver, but one of the big keys is just mental bandwidth. <laughs> you know, because you're processing an awful lot and you're doing it in milliseconds out there. Yeah, and if you can do it without that, you know, just uh, grabbing the steering wheel as hard as you can and just wringing the car's neck and you just got that ability to absorb everything else that's going around, uh, that, that's a wonderful thing to have. And uh, some days you, uh, there are drivers who naturally have that ability and there's other drivers who some days they have it and some days they don't. You know, when you find yourself in that quote zone, uh, that's when you can really make the big uh, difference. Been fun watching Drew Stavely with uh, his progression through the AM ranks when they showed up a few years ago driving Janetta's and then uh, coming from Utah where the old Ford mm -hmm. Motorsports exactly. school was, they decided, you know, we love Mustangs, let's get into Mustangs, and it suited both he and Frank even better. And uh, just watching Drew progress here what he's been able to do in his first season as a pro already is pretty remarkable. Yeah, it really is. It is a great fit when they were sort of like looking at all of the different manufacturers where to switch uh, from the Janetta over to something new and fresh with the GT4 uh, platforms available to them. It just seemed to be the right move and uh, hats off to G3 in racing, racing and the whole group in terms of making that decision and making it work for them. It, yep. it's not. It's not the same for every team or every driver, but that was the right choice for them. And uh, you can see the results coming off another um, AM championship last year and now very much in this pro uh, class championship chase as well. He doesn't have enough time, I don't think, anymore. But going back to that battle for the lead in AM, Courtney has now got that margin down to under two seconds and has been consistently lapping three to four tenths faster than Dynan, but Dynan knew exactly what he had in hand here. And, uh, you know, for Dynan, he also has a guy named Darren Law that's involved with the Flying Lizards team that's a pretty good mentor as well. Ryan, what's happening in pit lane? Well, I wanted to give another update on one of our co-championship leaders coming into this race. Michael Cooper has brought his McLaren back into the pits, and the team has gone to work once again under the bonnet. And uh, it sounds like this might not be the same issue. This might be something different team trying to get that identified especially with a couple more races coming up this weekend but I was told that Michael had lost power at one point it might be more than just losing the boost all right thanks very much Ryan and the important thing for Cooper right now Cal uh, because of the uh, fact there are five cars in the pro class if he completes the minimum required distance to be scored as a finisher he gets fifth place points and I think that's their main target right now I would think well, yes, and also, let's figure out what's wrong with the race car. This yeah. becomes a test session, as we said earlier. The main thing is damage control, but we've got two more races to run, as Ryan alluded to, so let's get this problem fixed and sorted so we've got a, a strong race car for tomorrow. Spencer, just precision percent. You got Jarrett. I love the differences in these guys. You got Jarrett with that... Uh, Aggressive turn in, early turn in. You got Stavey with a big V8 iron just pounding over the curves. 
Yeah, That's and, what uh, makes this so compelling. And Andretti's uh, car has really stayed pretty consistent. I think there's that slight sort of drop off and then it's plateaued once again in terms of its lap times and he's managed to keep it right there. So it's not like Spencer has been able to drive away from him. That gap is, is comfortable, two and a half seconds. It was up over three at one point, but only takes a little bit of traffic in the wrong uh, part of the circuit, but we're now on a final lap, so it should be smooth sailing here with that gap to deal with. For Spencer Montpellier to uh, bring up his, full, his first victory of the 2020 campaign. Nice run out of Oak Tree. Hate not having the old tree there anymore, but corner is still one of the most crucial, if not the most crucial on the track. But uh, Spencer, as you said, uh, built that margin, worked the plan to perfection, and now it's just precision all the way down to the roller coaster for the final time. Oh, and a little bit of traffic here. It's Mark Clennon. Problem in that sin. And this is where having that two-second margin will pay big dividends for you because you know you can breathe if you need to and pick your line through there, Cal. Here he comes. What a great run, Spencer Pompelli. As you said, first one of the season. The Racers Group, Porsche and Spencer Pompelli win Virginia International Raceway in the first race after four months for SRO Motorsports America. Spencer and Pompelli brings home the win over Jared Andretti in the McLaren and Drew Stavely in the Mustang right there. Just a superb run by Spencer and that team. Look at that, Drew immediately takes the checkered flag, the door Pat, the driver door opens up. That's telling me that he is toasty inside that race car. And uh, on the AM side of things, they should be making their way towards start finish here very soon. And uh, pretty big margin. Dynan indeed comes through and picks up the win. So Aston Martin and Flying Lizard get another win here this season. Dynan getting his, uh, I think he said second in three races. That's pretty impressive. With Courtney, look how close Courtney got it at the end there. Yeah. under half a second in the last two laps he made up. Yeah, I tell you, those those 10 minutes that he spent behind Quinlan there really cost him a chance of putting some pressure on Dynan. I mean, Dynan responded yep. as soon as Courtney was through with some good lap times, but I think Courtney had the pace there today, and that will give him a lot of confidence heading into tomorrow's race. And uh, just looking at fast laps, Courtney's was uh, a little bit quicker than yep. uh, Dynan, so he should have... Uh, Fastest time and uh, pole position in the end class for tomorrow. Well, it's going to be interesting, actually, because, yeah, Courtney's a 56-3. Then there's a couple of 56-9s from Gumprecht and Paul Terry, then Dynan at a 57. So Dynan, it looks to me, will be fourth. And Terry will be up in front of him. So this gets curious, sir. Yes. <laughs> but what a run by Spencer. And uh, just to let everybody know, our uh, post-race interview protocols, again, because of the COVID-19 protocols that are very much in place here, and it's been an amazing bit of, uh, of synchronicity, if you will, between SRO, between VIR, between all of the teams as you take a look at the race results here. Remember, the red background with the white numbers and AM category car, and Dine in fourth overall with Courtney completing the top five. That's impressive stuff. But uh, with these protocols and uh, you know, even maintaining social distancing and interviews and the like, that's why you haven't seen Ryan do interviews in pit lane on air. Uh, he, can, he can yell and get some information and give us some updates, but it's all because we are trying uh, to make sure that everybody is as safe and responsible as possible. And that will flow into our post-race uh, where the interviews will happen, but uh, there will be social distancing. Uh, and it won't happen in pit lane. They'll all go over to a staging area uh, for the interviews. So just uh, want to let everybody know to expect that. Again, it's all part of being able to come back and race here in these strange times and making it work for everybody. And uh, so far, uh, it's been great. And we had a great race to kick off uh, the restart of the SRO season. Great to be back. Great to be at <laughs> VIR once again. And certainly Spencer Bumpali did everything right. He had some concerns going in, but they did not. Turn out the way he thought they might in terms of the competition. Spencer grabs his first win of the year. So I'm guessing they're not planning on using those tires the rest <laughs> of the weekend. <laughs> yeah, it was a, just a beautifully judged drive. That's something that he is known for. And uh, getting instructions right now for where to go. Busy uh, day unfolding, busy weekend here, as you've said, with all of these makeup races. 
a number of the classes having three races as opposed to two. That's why we're racing a little bit early here on on the Friday as opposed to the normal Saturday Sunday uh, for it to unfold here. We've got two more races to unfold today, and then it's sort of back to the normal schedule, if you will, tomorrow. Uh, but that is still mighty busy here, and we're looking forward to it. And anybody who is uh, wondering what's coming up next, it is all three of SRO America's TC America category machines. TCR, TC, and TCA will be out racing together on the track, and that should be an absolutely great scrap as well, based on what we've seen uh, in qualifying there. So looking forward to that. Don't go too far. Yeah, that's going to be a fun one. When we run all three of those classes together, there's always fireworks going on somewhere and uh, some great storylines <laughs> exactly. coming in, some very tight fields in all three classes. So should be spectacular. Yeah, I would agree that's the perfect way to put it. What a beautiful setting here. Just a real old school racetrack. Um, just uh, one that really challenges the drivers and the setups on the race cars as well. Yes. Take a look at some of the highlights here. And Spencer Papelli from Pole Cal held on to the lead, but look at Jared Andretti trying the outside move, and it worked. It did. He couldn't get around Drew Stavely, but he eventually made the move on the brakes down into turn three to get around the other McLaren and Michael Cooper. He was on the charge early. Early in the going, it was also Stavely was able to put some pressure on Spencer Papelli, the top four pro cars able to draw away just a little bit from the rest of the field and make it mano a mano. But then Mr. Gumprecht in his debut of the championship learning uh, the uh, weak side of ABS. Yeah, just got <laughs> down on the dirty part of the racetrack, couldn't get it well done. This was really nicely set up by Jeff Courtney after a number of attempts. He finally gets by Sean Quinlan for second on the run down into turn four. He'd been working that one for three, four laps, but once he got clear, he started to throw down some serious laps and was able to ease away from Quinlan. But at the end, it was Spencer Pompelli, happy enough, apparently not using those tires again, and doing a little celebratory donutting out on the track as he got his first win of the season, and Michael Dynan held on for the win in AM. I shouldn't say held on for the win. He, he uh, really earned it and controlled it beautifully. But with the race now complete, let's get down to Ryan. Hey, thank you very much, Greg. Our champion here, race number one of the weekend at VIR, a Virginian himself, Spencer Pompelli, joining us. Uh, I know you had a little bit of concerns. The guys talked about it before the race, but it seemed like you had that one pretty well under control from the moment the green flag fell. Yeah, I knew if we could get it clean air, we'd be okay. You know, our car is good when it's cool, but when we get hot and get heat soaked, we tend to really struggle. So the key is to keep the radiator clean. And uh, got a nice little gap there as they were fighting behind me, but. Towards the middle, the end of the race, I have everything I had to keep it there. So uh, hats off to Taryn for running really quick, keeping us honest. And uh, we started to fade a little towards the end, but fortunately we built enough at the beginning to take it. But TRG, LaSalle Solutions, everyone that puts this car here and makes sure that it's ready to go out and win, can't say enough. It's been a long gap since we were all together last, and this is a great way to come back. This is the second straight year that this package, you, the team, the car, have been fast here at VIR. You didn't get the results though last year for reasons kind of out of your control. Was that in the back of your mind at all? It, it was, but fortunately we've been uh, fairly brought a good tire. And we've been really uh, watching that throughout practice and qualifying. No one's had any issues, so really the hats off to those guys for, for showing up with the tire that we can run as hard as we possibly can here. And uh, you know, it's it a learning process last year. Finally, we got to take advantage of our pace because I don't think we have this pace at a lot of other tracks. Well, you only got to do it two more times this weekend. Congratulations on race one. Thank good you. luck. Thanks, Ryan. He makes up a good point here. Not makes up. He makes a good point here, obviously, that uh, when you go to a weekend where your car is strong, especially with this schedule that you were alluding to, you better optimize it. Yeah. You know, Spencer's savvy enough to probably look at the calendar and know which racetracks they will be strong with the Porsche, and uh, he's got to really focus on those. And then the other's damage control, try and minimize the points loss. So that's how it unfolded here in uh, Pirelli GT4 America Sprint Racing. Congratulations to Spencer Pompelli and Michael Dynan, your two winners as SRO Racing resumes.